Hello, welcome back again. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different to our others. Normally I talk about kits um, because we sell kits. Um, this one isn't about kits. I was just having a play um, the other day and I thought I'm going to try and make a little carousel to display pens on. I don't sell pens. We sell pen kits but I don't sell finished pens. But I've got drawers absolutely stuffed full of um, pens that I've made. Um, I, I am, I have to confess, sick of the sight of brass tubes but that's another story. Anyway, I thought I'd have a play uh, and I came up with this. It's This is a prototype and I'm, I'm, this video is going to be me showing you how to do something similar to this. Um, now I know some of you like instructions to know exactly what measurements to do. Um, I'll tell you the measurements that I use for this but to be honest it's entirely up to you what size and shape that, that you make is. Um, uh, but basically it's a little pen stand. I haven't got pens on it because it's a prototype. This one it's a bit too wide at the top it needs to be narrower so when I put pens on there I can get them to balance but the minute I move it they all fall off. Um, that's just the way I go about developing things. I like to come and have a play and actually make it and try it, find the problems and then put those right. Other people like to do it on paper. That's just not my style. So anyway, what I'm going to do today is show you um, how you can make one of these. Um, I did look on YouTube to see if I could find if someone else had made one. There may be one out there, but I haven't managed to find a video. So I hope this just a, a little bit of an idea for some of you to maybe um, create what can only be described in modern marketing speak as an interactive pen display. So I've got a bit of Sapili over there in plank form. Um, I'll move the camera over and show you the cutting and explain the sizes that I'm using. Um, and what I will say is all this needs um, is a bearing and some little dowel connectors. That's all I've used to make this. Yes, I could have bought a Lazy Susan um, metal bit but they're ugly and metal and I haven't got one anyway so um, bearings you know they're not very expensive we don't set them I might decide to put them on because the one I use here is actually out of our bowl sander kit so we do have some but um, frankly you can use any bearing with as long as it's got the right size dowel piece I'm going to stop wittering let's get on with it so I've started off with two bits of wood hang on let me zoom that out a bit there we go two bits of sapili these are 170 mils square um, now I need to get a base for putting the bearing into um, I need a larger circle for the bottom a smaller circle for the top and some uh, spindles to separate the two and maybe a little knob on the top and I'm hoping I can get all of these out of uh, out of these two bits of wood so I've now got 140 millimeters on here and this is going to be the bit that the tips of the pens sit onto which we'll mark out and look at turning in a minute. There's my bit for the spindle um, that's the centre bit we'll probably come to that last there might be enough on there to get a knob as well um, and now we come to this bit now this bit I'm hoping is going to do the small top section for the pens to lean into and also the very base of the unit which is going to be smaller and underneath. Pens aren't very heavy so it doesn't need to be absolutely massive but you can make it whatever size you want. I'm just tr going to try and squeeze it out of this bit here. And the size that I need for the top section to be is around about 80 millimeters but I've got to drill some holes so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than that. I'm actually going to make it 100 mils and then we'll see what we're left with to make a base out of. And a little bit through doing that I changed my mind and decided I'd go for 80 mils so I've got 80 mils on here um, and this bit is I think it's about 90 mils and I've got some spare bits here as well so I'm going to make the base out of one of these bits. Um, Oh, I think I might do it out of that bit, but we'll see. Now I've marked the centre of all these. What I've actually got in the pillar drill is, if I'll bring that down, you'll be able to see it. This is a 38mm force and a bit. This is my way of cheating. What I'm actually going to do is drill just into, into the centre here, not all the way through, a little bit down. This is to save me making um, 
the tenon on the block to mount on the lathe I'm just going to use a drill uh, this 38 millimeter force and a bit is one I use for um, pepper mills um, it depends on the size of your jaws that's ideal for me you could, I could probably get away with a 35 millimeter which is a bit more of a common size but if you're thinking of doing pepper traditional um, type pepper mills pepper grinders and salt grinders um, a 38 mil one of those is invaluable so I'm just going to make um, a, a little indentation here that is going to enable me to hold um, this on the chuck on the lathe. I'm going to do that on all three pieces um, that's going to enable me to hold it this is going to be the underneath so you're not going to see this it's going to be that way up when it's finished so I've got my chuck on the lathe and I've got my holes in the back of these blocks here so the next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to pop them onto the chuck and with each one just use a pencil just to mark um, the very um, outer circle that I'm able to get out of these I'm then just going to pop it back on the band saw just to trim off the excess just to stop making a horrible mess in the workshop and I'm going to do that with each one um, hopefully you'll see that mark on there I'm just going to trim off the corners just to stop making a mess I'll do that with each one um, and this is rough saw and so it's pretty flat but as I said these are the underneath so this will, this will probably be the very base of the unit and what I will do is actually pop this on the belt sander just to get it smooth it's entirely up to you but we're not going to be swapping and turning these pieces around once they're on um, that way that's the only way that we're going to um, to finish them so we're only finishing this side and, and the very edges of the pieces that we're going to turn so on this video what I'm going to do is concentrate on each separate part at a time and the first bit we're going to look at is the very base um, so we'll mount it on the lathe I'm going to turn it round and then I'm going to trim and make the fitting for the bearing in this end here Now for the next bit I need to make the hole in here the right size for the bearing and I'm trying to get this to be a good fit. If you don't get it a good fit it's not the end of the world. Um, um, you can always glue these in place just make sure you don't glue the two parts of the bearings together. That's all obviously the centre bit needs to, to spin. Um, you can either do it by eye or um, you're going to need one of these later on anyway when we come to marking out the other parts. Um, I'm just going to pop that in the centre there and it's just going to give me a rough idea of where I'm looking to, to trim to in the centre there um, and I'm then just going to um, fiddle around until I get a good fit um, with this bit here. That's better, that's quite nice and tight now and that's just going to take a little tap to get that in place. Um, so now we can look if you want to shape that, sand it and finish it and then we've pretty much got the base done. So the next part we're moving on to is the main bottom part where the pen 
nibs are going to sit on here and the first thing we're going to do is turn this round and then we'll look at making a mark once we've got it all flat and leveled up making a mark as to where we want to put all the, the little dips all the little countersinks for the ends of the pens to go so we now need to do two jobs on here one is to mark on um, a circle where we're going to mark and put our counter sinks and the other is to put an 8mm hole through the centre uh, and you can do it um, whichever way you prefer and, and then you can look at shaping this um, what you need to decide is what size counter sink you're going to put in there I'm going to use just an old one that I've got here uh, what I do need to make sure is when I put it in that I don't put the line too close to the edge and lose the counter sink on the edge here um, so you need to set it in a little bit. If I just hold that there, it'll give me an idea. Pop a little mark there, and we'll just spin that round to give us a mark. So we've got our mark there. Um, what we're now going to do is drill an 8mm hole into the centre. And this 8mm is for my 8mm dowel, which fits into the bearing that I've got. As I often do, I'm using a centre finder first to make sure we go right in the centre Whenever you're drilling on a lathe, always hold the Jacobs chuck. What you don't want to do is to withdraw your tailstock and find that your drill is stuck in your piece of wood. It will fling it around, break your drill and fly off and it can be very painful. And I normally forget to say that when I'm filming and put it on afterwards, but I've remembered today. Right. Now what we need to do is mark this bit here and put our counter sinks in and then we can look at a bit of shaping and finishing. Um, you can do some shaping and finishing first if you want um, or do it afterwards it's entirely up to you depends how much of a shape you want to put in it. I prefer to do the counter sinks and then I can work my design around where the counter sinks are and also adjust the depth of them as well. Now for the next bit you are going to need a pencil, um, a straight edge and a protractor. Uh, this really is quite important. There's nothing so you can use engineers ones. I've just got plastic um, schoolboy ones. I'm going to start off drawing a line straight across the centre. Well, actually, not straight across the centre. I'm just going to put a little mark across. Yeah, I am right across the middle because it's going to be much easier for me to see then. Right. I'm not sure the camera will pick up the marks I'm making on here, but I made one across the centre. The next thing I need to do is to get one at exactly 90 degrees to that. I'm not going to guess. I'm going to use this protractor and get exactly 90 degrees and make sure I'm in the centre of that hole there. Let's draw that line across there and extend that right across to the other side. The next thing I'm going to do is mark 45 degrees on here. Now it depends how big one of these you've made as to how many pens you're going to get on it. Um, I'm just going to put one pen in between which is going to be 45 degrees. This is where your maths comes in. So I've got 45 degrees there and I'm just going to go around and mark 45 degrees on each one and then I'm going to join those lines together. If it's fashioning off, it's not the end of the world. Right, so I've got marks all the way around there. I'm just going to make doubly sure I've got them all lined up and you can't see it and I have to say I'm struggling a bit to see it as well but let's put my lines across there and another one straight across there 
and I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight markings on here, and I'm now going to put eight countersinks of equal depth into these marks that I've just made on there. Now, if anyone's wondering why I'm going to wind this all the way down, it's generally because I actually find it much quicker just to adjust my table up to the drill and use the drill at full depth than it is to adjust the depth gauge just because it takes so long on this model. Um, but I'm now going to drill the counter sinks into all these here. And there hopefully you can see on the camera that uh, we've got four nicely evenly spaced holes. I'm going to pop that back on the lathe and turn it to whatever shape I want and then finish it. Attempt number two, I've got a bigger piece of wood for the top now and hopefully if I catch that in the light you'll see that I've marked that out. I'm going to drill down here. Um, in actual fact what I'm going to do is not drill all the way because I think that's a bit too thick. It depends what, type, what thickness of wood you've got. Um, so I'm actually just going to drill down with my 20mm um, force and a bit, um, probably three quarters of the way um, down there and then we'll then look at reshaping that um, back on the lathe. So now we're going to look at taking this back to the lathe. What I am going to do beforehand is I'm just going to pop it on the bandsaw just to trim off some of the excess because we don't want a whole circle here, we want a half circle. Um, so I'm going to just do that on the bandsaw and then we'll pop back to the lathe. So there we have a little top. You may decide that you don't want to drill and then turn that. You could turn it and then um, drill or you could um, chamfer that out a different way. There's probably various ways of doing it. I'm going to polish that up a little bit on um, a, my second lathe in, in a minute uh, just to get a slightly better finish on it because it's difficult with these bits sticking out. Uh, but that is the principle of the top part that we want. So we now have our base with our bearing in, our bottom part with the countersinks for the pens and the top part with the little cutout, it's a bit like a crown um, that, and we now need to decide how high that needs to be fitted up there and make a spindle for the in between those two parts and then whatever top we want on here. Um, now because we've got 8mm holes all the way through for the dowels, we're going to drill 8mm hole in the spindle as well. So, depending on what size bits you've got, if you stand the pen on there and hold that roughly over the centre and then pop a ruler down the side, you'll see roughly how high you want it. I reckon probably about 100 mils uh, is going to be right on this one. Um, so my centre spindle 100 mils long and then whatever cap I want to put on the top. So I've got my spindle. 8mm hole that end, 8mm hole that end, and let's turn that between centres to whatever shape that uh, we choose.
I've got this between centers at the moment I'm going to quickly turn it down to the right diameter so I can put it back in the uh, the chuck jaws um, before I put it back in the chuck jaws however I'm going to drill me eight millimeter hole in this end but I'm just going to trim this square bit round um, so I can get it back in the chuck When you drill the 8mm hole, because this bit's scrap and will be cut off, that's just to be held in the jaws, make sure the 8mm hole comes into the uh, where the top um, knob or finial is going to go in here. It doesn't really matter how long it is, as long as we can get an 8mm dowel rod to connect into the top of the, uh, the carousel. All we've got to do, if your dowels are a bit too long, is just trim them off because some of them won't need to be as long as they are. But we'll pop that one in there. And that one's going to go on there. We can probably just push it in by hand. We need to make sure we've got enough room in the bottom to get one of the dowels in the bottom as well. So that's actually a bit, a bit long. Take that one out of it. Um, and we'll just trim that one off. There we go. And finally, we need to put one in the bottom there. And this is the only one we really need to measure to make sure that this dowel doesn't press into the base of this. It's just got to sit just inside that little bit there. So uh, I'm actually going to measure this and trim it up to make sure it fits together properly. there's one of the pens the other thing that I haven't said and I've just noticed now if you do glue this make sure that these bits are lined up with those bits and at the moment they're not so we turn that round we actually find there we are it's a bit better and it sits a bit better so hopefully that gives you an idea if I hold it up there of um, the finished thing and we can get eight pens on there and that just turns around gently on the top like so so there we have one finished pen carousel. I will put some decent pens in it in a bit. Um, certainly from my prototype, I've got the angle a little bit better there. If I turn that around, you'll see the angle they're all leaning at, and that's now spinning um, quite nicely there. Um, as I say, we're not selling the parts, but I just thought, well, someone might like it. Um, that as an idea to do with something a little bit different um, to display your pens. I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much for joining me again, and we'll see you at the next video. Very happy turning and happy making whatever it is you do in your workshop. Bye-bye for now.